Greetings Earthlings and brand new Shure SM7B owners. Today I'm going to be walking you through how to properly set up the Shure SM7B. But first let's talk about what comes in the box. Wait, actually, I gotta throw this. When you open the box, you'll get a little bit of documentation. You'll get a cable tie, the actual microphone, a back plate to cover the switches on the rear of the microphone, a big old fat foam windscreen, and a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter. Step one is attaching the microphone to a microphone stand. The screw mount on this has a 5 8 inch threading, and that is what you'll find on a standard microphone stand. Here I have one of these really big stage tripod microphone stands. The end of that is 5 8 inch threading, so all you need to do is place the mount on the stand and then screw it on and you should be good to go. But if you find yourself with a desktop boom arm, those typically have 3 8 inch threading, so you will need to pull out the golden adapter thing that we saw. And when you're installing this onto the microphone, make sure that the notches face outwards because this will allow you to use a coin to loosen or tighten this down. Then you do the exact same thing and you place the mount next to the boom arm and screw it on. Step two is setting the microphone in the correct position. Now I know that a lot of people enjoy using their microphone really far away from them because then it allows the microphone to be out of their vision and it doesn't interfere with their computer peripherals whether it be typing on a keyboard or clicking on a mouse. With this microphone, that is very difficult to get away with because it is so quiet, and because of that, I always recommend using this microphone no farther than six inches away, but to get the best results, I personally prefer around three inches away. Now I have the microphone about four fingers away from my mouth, but it is directly in front of me, and that makes the microphone really susceptible to plosives. What plosives are is when you make a P or a B sound, a gust of air leaves your mouth, and it could hit the diaphragm of the microphone, making a really loud percussive sound. For example, please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. You can really hear the air hitting the diaphragm of the microphone, that p -p -p -p. That is not a sound that you want. That is very distracting, and it can actually damage your microphone. So what we want to do is move the microphone slightly off axis, and we will speak past the microphone. Now when I say, please bring pizza pronto, no air is hitting the diaphragm, and you avoid any of those plosives. Step three is connecting the microphone to your USB audio interface and setting the gain. The first part of this is incredibly easy. You'll take the female end of the XLR cable and connect that to the SM7B, and then you'll take the male end of the XLR cable and plug that into the XLR port of your USB audio interface. Next, you want to open up the software that you're going to be using to record or stream any software really that has a visual meter because we're going to be using that to set the gain of the interface. Right now I have the gain on the focus right set to 12 o'clock. I will slowly go ahead and increase this and what we're looking for on the meter is hitting around negative 18 decibels. That gives us enough headroom so if we get really loud we don't hit zero decibels meaning we will not clip or distort the interface. And to reach this level, you can see we hit around 3.30 or maybe 4 o'clock on the gain dial. And this is the level that I would have the microphone set at if I was recording or streaming, because in both of those situations, I'm able to add gain in post. If you do want to know a little bit more about that, I will link two videos for you. The first one being how to set your gain properly, and the second on how to set up OBS so you can bring up the level from around negative 18 dB to a more listenable level without clipping or distorting your interface. However, if you aren't able to adjust your audio at all once it's made it onto your computer, maybe you're in a conference call for work, or maybe you're in Discord, then I think it would be acceptable to increase your gain a little bit more, although I will tell you to be very careful here. I'll just go ahead and increase my gain to 100% on the Focusrite 2i2 3rd gen, and on my meter you can see we're hitting around negative 6 to negative 3 dB. And the reason why I'm telling you to be careful here is if you get loud, 
you can hear that it does start to distort and sound really bad. Hopefully, if you're in a work call, you're not screaming at anybody, but that's just something to be aware of. If you set your gain this high, you need to be acutely aware of how loud you're speaking and make sure to monitor what your level is at, because if you get excited, if you get angry, you will clip and distort your microphone and it sounds terrible. And the last thing that I'll say in this section is if you're using a FET head or a cloud lifter, one of these mic activators or inline preamps, the methodology and steps are exactly the same. You're just going to install this preamp in line and then you're going to engage 48 volts phantom power and then you'll set your level accordingly. Nothing else changes. You should be shooting for the exact same level. Step four, look at the accessories and the switches. First, let's look at the windscreens that come with a microphone, and currently I have the smaller windscreen installed. This will be less effective at stopping plosives or those gusts of air, but it will allow the microphone to be a little bit brighter sounding, because when you put the thicker windscreen on, that adds a lot of foam in front of the diaphragm, and that reduces the highs on the microphone quite a bit. So my recommendation is unless you know you're really bad with plosives or you know you're going to be recording in an incredibly windy environment, I think you should use the thinner windscreen because it yields a much better sound. But let me go ahead and put on the thicker windscreen so you can hear how that affects the sound. And now the really thick windscreen is installed and you should hear a change in the tone of the recording. It should sound a little bit darker. You should lose a little bit of the shh that top end in the recording because this attenuates quite a bit of that. However, p -p -p, it does an incredible job at plosive rejection. That's why I say, unless you know you're terrible with plosives, I recommend using the little one. But if you are terrible with plosives, p -p -p, it's amazing. And the last thing that I want to say about the foam windscreens is don't be afraid to not use either of them. I imagine a lot of people won't be looking at this for streaming, but if you're using this microphone for recording, this is a very common trick in recording studios because the foam does reduce that high end. And if you want a little bit more of that life, taking off both of the windscreens and using an external pop filter can yield much better results and give you a slightly brighter sound. And the second thing we want to look at are the switches on the rear of the microphone. One of them is going to be a low cut filter, which will reduce the low end of the recording. The other is a presence boost, which will increase the higher end of the recording. For this example, let's say that I like eating the microphone, I'm right on top of it, and I'm getting a lot of that proximity effect, a lot of that added bass, and I think that it sounds a little bit too muddy. That's where the low cut filter on this microphone would come into play. So let me engage that so you can hear how that sounds. Now I've engaged the low cut filter and you should hear quite a drastic change to the tone of the recording. It reduces a lot of that body, a lot of that warmth that I think is so appealing about this microphone, but it's undeniable it does make it sound less muddy and a little bit more clear. But now let me switch off the low cut and we will do another example. Now I have the big fat foam windscreen on it and I do not have the low cut filter engaged. Now let's imagine I think that this sounds a little bit too dull, a little bit too dark, and I want a little bit more liveliness, a little bit more top end to the recording. That's where the presence boost will come into play. So let me go ahead and switch that on. And now I've engaged that presence boost switch and again, you should hear quite a drastic change. The top end comes to life. There's a lot more information going on up there. It is much more prominent. My words sound a little bit clearer. So if you're using this microphone and you think that it's too dark or dull sounding, do not be afraid to engage that presence boost switch. And just because we can, now I have the low cut or high pass filter engaged and that presence boost switch engaged, just so you can hear how it sounds with both the switches engaged and the big fat foam windscreen on it in case you want to use it in this configuration. And here I am right on top of the microphone with the low cut and the presence boost engaged with the smaller windscreen on it, and I am eating the microphone right on top of it. But I am partial to the completely neutral mode, no low cut and no presence boost engaged. Let me go ahead and switch back to that. 
And finally, once you've determined what setup you're going to be using in terms of the windscreen and the switches on the microphone, just do a quick double checking of your gain level again, because adding the foam windscreen and then the presence boost, that will affect the level that you're getting out of the microphone. So just make sure you're still hitting an appropriate level and adjust accordingly. And I think that's about it on getting your SM7B set up. If you do have any other questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments and I will try to answer as many as I can. If you did find this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, give me a big old thumbs down. If you want more videos you can subscribe, go ahead and click that logo down beneath me. And if you want to support the channel and be one of these amazing people, you can do so by clicking the join button or going to patreon.com slash podcastage and joining at the $5 tier or higher really does help me continue to bring you these videos. So until next time, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Congrats on the new microphone. I'll talk to you later.